Here we go. Study guide A. Problem number one says, if f of x equals x squared plus 5x plus 2, what is f of negative 1? We said that the word or the term f of x stands for that this is saying that it's a function. What did we say with functions? In order to evaluate, we substitute whatever this number is for all the x's that you see, right? So therefore, the negative 1 goes here, here, and here. So this becomes f of negative 1 equals negative 1 in parentheses squared plus 5 times negative 1 plus 2. Is that ringing a bell? Okay. Number, oh, let's continue. Let's simplify. Here we're going to use our order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Susan. I don't have a tally. All right, here we go. Here we go. So then it says, parentheses. Do we have parentheses? Yes. Can we simplify inside of the parentheses anymore? No. Exponents. Yes, right here. So what is negative 1 squared? 1. I bring everything else down. 5 times negative 1 plus 2 equals f of negative 1. Next, do I have multiplication and division? Yes, right here. So I need to do that first. What is 5 times negative 1? Negative 5. I bring everything else down. The 1, the plus 2, equals f of negative 1. From there, at the end, do we have addition and subtraction and we go from left to right? Yes, we do. So let's see. From left to right, 1 minus 5. Negative 4. Negative 4 plus 2. What is negative 4 plus 2? What is it? Negative 2, and I bring down the f of negative 1, and we're done. Copy that. Okay, number 2. Here it goes. It says, file number 2, 15 less than 3 times x is 1 more than x. And then it says, find the number. 15 less than 3 times x is 1 more than x. So first let's translate this. It says, 15 less than 3 times x. So what do we know whenever we see greater than or less than? Check this out. I want you to circle this. Whenever you see this, the number that is being mentioned before that goes after our first x when we start writing it. So let's read it. 15 less than 3 times x. So what does that mean? We need to write 3 times x first. How do we find, how do we write 3 times x? 3x. And if this goes after, it says 15 less than 3 times x. What does less than mean? Minus 15. Okay? The word is, what does that mean? Equals. And then it says here, what did we say again? Whenever we see more than, it comes after the x. So we write, on this one, we write which one? x. And then more than means 1 and 1. Did everybody follow? Okay, so now, do we know how to solve these? Yes, where do we start? So, yeah, subtract the x, subtract the x. We need to isolate the variable. This cancels. We're left with 2x minus 15 equals 1. From there, we got, let's see, 2x minus 15 equals 1. What do I do? Plus 15 plus 15. We got 2x equals 16. And then at the end, divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals 8. Did we answer the question? Yes. First it says 15 less than 3 is more is 1 more than x, and then it says find the number. Did we find the number? Yes. Okay. Go to the next one. Number 3. It says, the sum of three consecutive integers is 69. Find the integers. So let's see. 
For this one, we need to use a, a table, right, to organize our, our information. So how many numbers are we talking about? Three. Three. So how many lines down? Three. three. One, two, three. One across. So you're going to write here the first consecutive, second, third, and here total. So what is the total? 69. And then it says the sum of three consecutive integers is. Let's see. Do they give us any other information? No. no. But let me ask you this. Pay attention. Pens down. Let's say these are my consecutive integers. Right? One, two, and three. Let's say they are. But we know that if it says sum, one plus two plus three does not equal to 69, but it's not. But let's say they were. I have this my first one. What happens to this to get this number? What happens to this again to get this number? So therefore, with that same thought, you said we add one to get this one, we add two to get this one. Since we don't know the first consecutive, what do we label it? X. What would we write here if we don't know the second one? X what? X plus 1. What we write here? X plus 2. That's how we write our consecutives. So now, it says the sum. What does that mean? You add all of them. So therefore, let's write it out. X plus X plus 1 plus X plus 2 equals 69. Do we know what to do from there? Yes. Combine like terms. We have 1, 2, 3. That gives us 3x. And then we combine the constants. Plus 3 equals 69. From there we subtract 3 from each side. We're left with 3x equals 66. And then divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals 22. So there, the question was, the sum, it says the sum of three consecutive integers is 69. Find the integers. So let's see. What is x? 22. What would be the next consecutive? 23. And the last one, 24. So your statement would read the three consecutive 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 sorry oh wow consecutive integers are 22, 23, and 24. 10 Q. Copy that. Let's continue. Example number four. It says, solve a system of equations using any method. Focus, please. It says, any method. So, by looking at it, both of them are already in standard form, which tells me I can use elimination. However, in order to eliminate one of the variables, in order to eliminate one of the variables, they need to be the opposite coefficients, right? So what, if I want to eliminate the y's, what does, let's see, what would this one need to be? Wait, what would this one need to be? Negative 10, because this one is 10, right? However, look at the x's. These don't even match it, even if I do one negative or whatever, right? This would mean that I have to multiply both of them in order to make them look opposites, right? So the closest one will be this one. So what do I need to multiply this one to make it look like a negative 10? Times 2. So we need to multiply this one times 2. It's already negative 5. To be a negative 10. So this becomes, I'm going to write it here, 8x. This becomes negative 10y. And this becomes 46. 
Now can we eliminate the y's? Look at them. Yes, 10y minus 10y, that cancels. What combine like terms here, what is 3 plus 8? 11x equals 46 plus 31, that's 77. Last step. Divide by 11, divide by 11, x equals 7. Am I done? No, I need to solve for the second variable. So which uh, equation would you like to use, this one or this one? It doesn't ma really matter, right? I'll use the uh, first one. So I'm going to use this one right here. 3x plus 10y equals 31. But instead of x, what am I substituting in here? 7. I bring this down. Yeah, 7 because of this. Plus 10y equals 31. And let's solve. This is... 21 plus 10y equals 31. What do I do from there? Minus 21 minus 21. We got 10y equals 10. What's my last step? Divide by 10, divide by 10. y equals 1. Am I done? No, I need to write it in a, in a, uh, in a coordinate form. What is my x? 7. What is my y? 1. This is a solution to the system. What does that mean, solution to the system? This is where both lines what? Intersect. And you just write it in there so you remember. Where both lines intersect. Okay? Now, for those of us that don't see it, here, let me show you really quick. Uh, let's say I was to graph this. I needed to solve for y first. And uh, both of them are going to have a negative slope. Let's see, no, just one of them a negative slope, the other one a positive slope. And it would look something like this. Here's my coordinate plane. What is the point here? 7, 1. So check this out. This point will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 1. That means the two lines, if I was to graph them, would look something like this. And you see how they both intersect at that point? That's what that means, a solution. Okay? All right, let's go to number five. Number five says, Sally has $21.40 in dimes and quarters for a total of 100 coins. How many of each kind of coins does Sally have? So, Oh, there, he, there you go. Now you have a sound. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Get it? You guys, no? You guys miss? Never mind. All right, here we go. So, um, first of all, what kind of uh, coins do we have? Dimes and quarters. So that means two lines down. One, two, two across. Remember these? Okay, so then uh, it, for this one, we're actually going to do three lines down. So we're going to write... D for dimes, Q for quarters, and over here, total. Our first line is going to be the, uh, the value. The second line will be the item type. Item type. In this case, it's what? Coins. Okay, what kind of coins? So, value for dimes, we can write it how? Point ten. Point 0.10, and since we don't know how many uh, dimes, we're going to write B for the variable, okay? For quarters, it's 0.25Q, because we also don't know how many quarters. But we do have a total and value. What is the total and value? 2140. So now, do we know how many dimes we have, the, uh, the coins, the type of coins? 
No, so we just write B. How many quarters? Q. How many total coins? 100. And now we have our two equations and we can solve it. So I'm going to write my first equation right here. Point 10D plus point 25Q equals 2140. Is it coming back? Yes? So then I write D plus Q equals 100. And this is a 10, not a 16. Okay. So by looking at it, which variable shall we eliminate? D. D. Okay. So in order to eliminate these two, since it's in standard form, what do I need to multiply this by? Times negative point 10. Negative point 10. So we distribute to all of these. That becomes negative point 10 B. Minus point 10 Q equals negative 10. Now we can eliminate them. Right now, and once again, I'm going to highlight this so you can see it. Right now, we're not going to use this one right here. We're just going to use this one and this one. Does everybody see it? All right, so let's eliminate. So we 10 minus 10, these cancel. So we're left with 25 minus 10, that leaves us with 0.15Q equals $21.40. Take away 10, that leaves us 11.40. And what do I do at the end? Divide by 0.15, divide by 0.15. Find out how many quarters we have left. I'm going to do the division over here on the side. 11.40 divided by... 0.15, we move a decimal twice, decimal twice, and it goes away. So let's see. 15 fits in here seven times. That's seven uh, 105. Subtract. That leaves us with uh, nine. Bring down the zero. 15 fits in there six times. So therefore, how many quarters do we have? 76. 76 quarters. Okay, so to find out how many dimes, well, let's see our equation. Which equation of these two ever look up? Of these two tells us the coin type. This one. So I'm going to write that one. I got D plus Q equals 100. And instead of Q, I'm going to substitute 76. Bring everything else down. D plus 76 equals 100. Subtract 76, D equals 24. So, the question was, uh, how many of each kind of coin does Sally have? So our statement would be what? Sally has 76 quarters. Oh, quotas on 24 dimes. For a total of 100 coins. And hold on, I'm not done. And 21.40. Ten Q. Okay, let's go to number six. Yeah. Number six says a plane can fly three thousand seven hundred and fifty kilometers in three hours with the wind. The plane takes five hours to travel the same distance flying against the wind. Find the rate of the plane in still air and speed of the wind. So, how many lines down? Three. One, two, three. To a cross. So, uh, 
Uh, we have on this one, remember how we set it up? Rate times time equals distance. Remember that? All right. So, first of all, what is the distance for both of them? Well, let, let me set up the first, the first line. Here we go. This one is with the wind. With wind. The second one is against wind. Are you guys remembering these already? Yeah. Okay, so here we go. So for both, we know the distance is the same one. 3,750, 3,750. So let's find out what they have for with the wind. How much time did it take with the wind? With wind, three hours, that goes here. So now, what do we say when you're running with the wind? That means uh, that the wind is hitting you on your back. What does that do? It increases your speed, right? So therefore, since it's a plane, we're going to write T plus W. Yeah, the wind speed. Plane plus the wind. Okay. So what is the, uh, the time it took for the return trip? Five, that goes here. And it's against the wind. What happens to your rate? Minus W. So this is P minus W. Is it coming back? Yeah? So check this out. I'm going to write this one right here and this one to the right. So this becomes P plus W in parentheses to indicate multiplication. And what is it going to be multiplied by? 3 equals 37.50. The other one I'm going to write over here to the right. T minus W times 5 to indicate multiplication equals 37.50. Now, the reason I wrote them side by side so I can simplify first before I stack them and write them uh, so that it, I can use elimination to, uh, to solve. Remember that? So let's see. What can I do here to solve for, uh, uh, for this? To get rid of the 3, I divide by 3, divide by 3. We're left with P plus W equals, let's see, 3 fits in there, 1, 2, 5, and 0. All right. So now let's look at this one. What do I do here? Divide by 5, divide by 5. This becomes P minus W equals 7, 5, 0. So now I'm going to bring this one and I'm going to write it underneath here. I'm going to bring this one and I'm going to write it over here. P minus W equals 7, 50. Now we can use elimination. Which variable is going to eliminate when we combine? W's. These cancel because W minus W cancels. What is P plus P? 2 P equals 1250. Take away 750. That leaves us. Oh, you, you add. Yeah, that's true. My bad, my bad. I did that. I did that to see if you were paying attention. Yeah, there you go. So that is 0, 0, 9, 10, 2000. Divide by 2, divide by 2. The plane speed is 1,000 miles per hour. My goodness. Yeah, that was a very fast plane. Actually, that's kilometers per hour. So, um, now that we have the plane speed, which one of these two would we use to find the plane speed? The positive. So we have P plus W equals 1250. But instead of P, we substitute the... 1,000 right here. We bring down the plus W equals 1250 minus 1,000 minus 1,000. We're left with the wind speed is 250 kilometers per hour. Man, that's fast. I know, that's like the X-Men or something. All right, so uh, our statement.
Oh, yeah, yeah, my bad. I thought, I thought they were saying, somebody said Josue. I was like, really? He's fast? Yeah? Okay, here we go. The, it says, find the rate of the plane and the rate of the wind. The rate of the plane is 1,000 kilometers per hour. And the wind speed or rate is 250 kilometers per hour. 10 Q. Okay, let's go to number seven. I'll give you a couple seconds to copy that. Okay, let's go to number seven. Let me zoom in. It says, Seven m over eight minus three m over five equals eleven over two. First of all, what do you guys notice that there's fractions all over the place? And in order to simplify this to work without fractions, we need to multiply everything times the common denominator. So first of all, between check this out between the eight and the two, what would be a common denominator for both? Let me repeat that again. Between 8 and 2, the common denominator will be 8. And between 8 and 5, since there is none, we just multiply that, so the common denominator for all three would be 40. So we multiply everything times 40. Only the numerators. Here it goes. So, 40 times 7m, that's 280m over... 8 minus 120m over 5 equals, we got 440 over 2. Is that correct? Okay, let's simplify that. Uh, 8 fits in here 3 times? Yes? 35m. Very good. Next, minus 120 divided by 5, that's 24m equals, this divided by 2, 220. Can we combine like terms? Yes, this becomes 35 minus 24, that's 11m equals 220. At the end, we divide by 11, divide by 11. M equals. Let's see. 11 fits into 22 two times, but there's a zero at the end, so it's 20. Copy that. Number eight. It says, it takes Sally 15 minutes to pick apples from a let me zoom up, sorry. It takes Sally 15 minutes to pick apples from the tree in her backyard. Lisa can do it in 25 minutes. How long will it take them to work together? So now, there's two methods I showed you, right? Remember with the fractions, 1 over 15 plus 1 over 25 e equals, remember that? So we can use that, or do you want to use the formula? Okay, I'm going to show you both ways. Here we go. Copy this. 1 over 15x plus 1 over 25x equals 1. Remember that? Yeah. Then I said we need to multiply times the common denominator in order for, uh, for us to get rid of those fractions. What is our common denominator between 15 and 75? Okay. So let's multiply times 75, everything, and this becomes 75 over 15, and that is x, plus 75 over 25, x equals 75. So let's see. What is 75 divided by 15? 5x plus 75 divided by 25, that's 3x equals 75. 
This becomes 8x, because we combine like terms, equals 75. What do we do there? Divide by 8, divide by 8, x equals, 8 times what gives us something close to 75? 9, and we have 8 times 9, 72, and how many from there to 3, 8? Uh, and that's minutes. Minutes. If we use decimal, check this out. Let me use the, de the, the decimal. This is 3 divided by 8. Doesn't fit. Fits in there 3 times. 24, that's 6 out of 0. That's 7, 56. That's 4 at 5. This is x equals 9.375 minutes. And what does that mean? What does 9.375? We just need to multiply this times 60 to give us how many minutes, right? In seconds, I guess. 9.375. So now, that's one way. What was the other way? Let's see. A times B over... Uh, over A plus B. Yes. Right here? The common denominator. So this is 15 times 25 over 15 plus 25. This becomes 15 times 25, what is that? 25 times 15, we got 5, 2, 12, 50, 6, 25. Twenty-five times fifteen. Let's see, five, two, twelve. This is five. Let's see, five and two. Oh, what was it? Two. That's three seventy-five over forty, and that should give you something similar to that one. So four times eight. 4 times 9, and 3, 8 minutes. Okay? Go to number 9. Number 9. Solve and graph the inequality. Let me zoom into this one. Solve and graph the inequality. When you get to these, everybody look up. Look up. Whenever you get to these, you see the two bars? That indicates two inequalities. Make sure you, you write two inequalities when you get to these. So let's see. Is there anything outside the absolute value? No. At that point, we're going to write two inequalities. One negative. So that means this turns into a negative one. If it does, what happens to the symbol? It flips. And I write... 3x plus 5. The second one is going to be a positive, and everything, we write everything as is, 3x plus 5 less than 1 without the absolute values. From there, check this out, minus 5 minus 5, 3x greater than negative 6, divide by 3, divide by 3x greater than negative 2, this one, minus 5 minus 5, 3x less than negative 4, divide by 3, divide by 3, x less than, 3 fits in there one time, so it's negative 1.3 bar. So now let's graph. Focus, please. Here we go. There it goes. I'm going to graph this one in red. Negative 2 is right here. Does it include the negative 2? No, it's open point. X is greater than that. What numbers are greater? Everything to the right. This one. 
negative 1.3, negative 1 and 1 third is about right here. Negative 1.3. Does it include the point? No. Open point. And it says x is less than that, everything to the left. What do you notice? Do they intersect? This is an and. Therefore, check this out. This is how you write your, uh, your solution. Solution set x such that I write the first number negative 2 less than x less than negative 1.5 and that's our solution okay 1.3 my bad 1.3 bar that's an ugly 3 let me fix that thank you 1.3 bar Okay, let's go to number 10. Here we go, number 10. <laughs> 10. So, let me move this over really quick. Okay, it says, simplify. Like I said, on your, on your study guide, it should fit at the bottom. When we get to these, notice that there's multiplication. This is multiplying this other expression. But it has exponents outside. We know that we need to distribute the exponents inside. However, if we look up, the numbers that do not have an exponent, you need to write a 1. So therefore, distribute this. This becomes 2 to the third, x to the sixth, and y to the ninth times. You're going to put a, a big old dot right there for multiplication. Same thing here. Watch. This, this. And everybody look up, this one also. But this one, everybody look up, this one I'm going to write it in parentheses. Negative 3 squared, x to the 10, y to the 8. Are we there so far? Okay, so let's simplify the numbers first. What is 2 cubed? 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. What is negative 3 squared? Negative 3 times negative 3 is? Is positive 9. So now we multiply numbers with numbers. What is 9 times 8? 72. Okay? And then from there we go and multiply variables times variables. The same kind. So we have x to the 6 times x to the 10th. What is that? x to the 16th. And then the last one, y to the 9th. And y to the 8th. Y to the 17th. So my answer is 72. X to the 16th. Y to the 17th. So far so good? Okay. Let's go to number 11. 11. Here we go. It says, simplify. Now, notice this one. Pay attention, please. Notice this one has the, the one inside of the parentheses has now three terms. One, two, and three. You guys notice that? So that means we're going to multiply this times each of these terms by distributing. So here we go. So this times each of the terms. So I'm going to multiply this one times the first term. But let's see. Numbers with numbers. What is 1 half times 4? Let me show it right here. 1 half times 4. This becomes 4 over 2, which is 2. If you don't see it, it's because this one becomes 4 over 1, yes? 4 times 1 is 4. 2 times 1 is 2. And 4 divided by 2 is from there, variables with variables. What is, uh, let's see, s squared t times t squared. What is t squared times t? T, t to the third. But there isn't an s here, so I'm going to write s to the second, t to the third. Are we there so far? Go to the next term. This one times this one. Numbers with numbers, variables with variables. Let's see. Negative 10, well, 1 half times negative 10. That becomes what? 
Well, let's write the fraction first. Negative 10 over 2, which is negative 5. Variables with variables. S to the second times S to the first. S to the third. P to the first times T to the first. That's P squared. Next term. Same one, now times the third term. Numbers with numbers. We have 1 half times 6. That becomes 6 over 2, which is 3, and it's a positive 3. Variables with variables. S to the second times S to the second. S to the fourth. And is there another T here? No. So we end up with only one T. And by looking at this, let's see. Do any of these three terms have the exact same variables with the exact same exponent? No. So that means we cannot combine and we are done. So just remember with these, when you distribute numbers with numbers, variables times variables. Let's go to the next one, number 12. Okay, so by now we should be experts at these, right? Which means we need to rewrite this. This becomes parentheses 4u plus 7v close parentheses, open parentheses, 4u plus 7v. We're going to multi multiply those two. I'm going to use the area model. We have 4u plus 7v. Same here, 4u plus 7v. And I'm going to multiply this first term times the other two. So let's see. Numbers with numbers. 4 times 4, that's 16. u times u, that's u squared. Next one. 4 times 7, that's 28. U times V, that's U, V. Next one. This term times those two, so let's see. 7 times 4, that's 28. U times V, that's U, V. Next one. 7 times 7, that's 49. V times V, that's V squared. Are we there so far? Okay, let's write our first term, which is 16u squared. Combine like terms. Let's see, 28uv, aren't these the same kind of terms? Yeah, they both have uv. So 28 plus 28, that's 56uv. And what's our last term? plus 49v squared. Can we combine anything else? No, we're done. What's that? Okay. So that was number 12. Let's go to number 13. Okay, I'm going to use the area model once again. We got 2x plus 5y. Line across. This one is 2x minus 3y. Line down. So I'm going to start with the first term. This one times these two. So let's see. Number with numbers. 4x squared. Negative 3 times 2, that's negative 6xy. So far, so good? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, then we're going to multiply this one times these two. So let's see, 5 times 10, that's 10x times y, xy. And this is a positive 10. Okay? 5 times negative 3, that's negative 15y times y, that's y. Squared. So, I write my first term. Is there any other x squares? No. 4x squared. 
I'm going to combine like terms right here, this one with this one. Why am I going to combine them? Because both have the exact same variables, x, y, x, y. So what is 10 minus 6? 4 x, y. And we bring down the negative 15 y squared. Can I combine anything else? No, this is my solution. And like I said, by now we are experts at these, right? Okay, copy that if you haven't finished. 14. Here we go. Write that down on your uh, blank sheet of paper if uh, you're taking notes on a separate sheet of paper. Some of you that have like three or four fonts, you can probably fit it in there. Okay, here we go. So, by looking at this, when it says simplify, does it have an equal sign? No, no that means at the end we're, we are not supposed to end up with x equal to something. We just have something simplified all the way. So it looks like we have two fractions and it's a what? Subtraction. That means we need a common denominator. So let's see. I'm going to factor this one completely. This becomes, check this out, this denominator is 5 times x times x. This denominator is 5 times 5 times x. By looking at them, look up please. What does this one need that this one has? A 5. And what does this one need that this one has? An x. So my common denominators now are 5 times 5 times x times x. I'm going to write that out like that. 5 times 5, x and x. 5 times 5, x and x. So if I multiply the denominator times 5, that means I need to multiply the numerator times 5. And it's a binomial, so I distribute. This becomes... 20x plus, what is 5 times 1? 5. This one, times x and times x, so the numerator is 7x. Did you ever see what I did? Okay. Now let's continue. Now we can write it as one fraction. What would be my common denominator? 5 times 5 times x times x. Let's see. What do we have here in the <clears throat> numerator? I draw my heart. Oh. And the negative distributes over here, so this becomes a what? Negative 7x. Are we there? So I'm going to write it out. This is 20x plus 5, and then minus 7x. Can I combine like terms? Yes. This becomes, let's see, uh, I'm going to go... This way, this is 20, 20x minus 7, that's 13x plus 5, because I combine this one with this one. Can I factor anything out here? No, there's no GCF. That means I'm going to multiply these out, so I end up with 25x squared. Since I cannot cancel out any giant ones, I am done. Remember for these at the end, sometimes we could uh, factor out a GCF. And if we did, then it would cancel something from the denominator but this, if we don't have any GCF. Number 15. Let's go to 15. Here we go. It says simplify. First, I'm going to uh, split these up with our product property of radicals. This becomes square root of 108 times the square root of z to the 30 seconds. So, 108. Let's find the factors of 108. Here it goes. 2 times 54. Yes? Then 2 times 27. Then 3 times 9, 3 times 3. Now check this out. I'm going to write this like this. How many 2's and how many 3's do we have? 2 2's and 3 uh, uh, and 3 3. So under the radical though, everybody look up please. We cannot have stuff that is not a perfect square. So watch. I'm going to write this one like this. 
this one I can write as 2 squared, yes? Times, this one I need to write it as 3 squared times 3. Why did I do that? Because I want to make sure I simplify these and leave this one inside. So, this, if you don't see it, here it goes, let me show you. 2 squared, square root 3 squared, square root of 3. So what is the square root of 2 squared? What is it? This cancels this, so we're left with 2 times. This cancels this, we're left with 3 times x cubed. What is 2 times 3? 6 square root 3. So we're done with the numbers. Now let's look at the variable. What happens to the exponent here with the invisible index? Divide by 2. So 32 divided by 2 is z to the 16. So now I combine this one and this one. What's outside the radical here? 6, and this one is outside, so then we write 6, z to the 16th, square root of 3. How are we doing? Yeah? Go to number 16. Yeah, let's go to 16. It says, give the domain of the relation, give the range of the relation, and C, determine whether the relation is a function. So let's see. To give the domain, that means the x values of this graph, where does it start on the x axis? Here's the x axis. Where does this graph start? On the, on the negative side negative 9. Where does it end on the positive side? 9. So check this out. The domain is written like this. Domain is negative 9. You leave a big, a big space in between and then you write the other number which is 9. Close your bracket and you just write x less than or equal to less than or equal to. That's the domain. That never changes. Once again, did everybody see what I did? And why did I do that? Because it says that x is in between these two, that it includes all the values for that graph. So let's look at the range. The range. The range are all y values. Where does it start on the negative side? Negative 3. Where does it end? 3. Negative 3, 3. Also, we write it like this, but instead of x, what do we write? Negative 3 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 3. And that's your range. Now, to check if this is a relation, I mean, if this is a function, check this out. You take uh, your pencil or anything else, watch. I'm going to scan this from left to right. Remember that? Good. And as soon as this vertical test touches at two spots, it's no longer a function. Look at that. Who we'll notice that when the line crosses negative 8, it touches two spots on the graph, here and there. That's why this is not a function. So you would write not a function. You coming back? Yeah. Kinda. I know your noodles turning very slowly being Monday and and yeah, whatever day. Yes. Yeah. Let's go to number seventeen. Seventeen. Any questions with this? We're good? Okay. Here we go. It says find the x and y intercepts of negative three x plus three y. So check this out. For this one, I remember that we wrote two equations, one for my x and one for my y. So, and I also told you, you can use the, uh, the cover-up method. Remember that? So check this out. If I cover up the y value, what do you see? Negative 3x equals 3. Do you guys see that? 
negative 3x equals 3. From there, I cover up the x value. What do you see? 3y equals 3. So then, to find my x and y intercepts, all I need to do is solve. I'm going to solve this one. Divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. x equals negative 1. That's my x intercept. This one, divide by 3, divide by 3, y equals 1, and that's my y-intercept. If you wanted to write those in, in coordinates, this is negative 1, 0, and this is 0, 1. <laughs> so your answer for this will be here and here, and if you want to add this, it's up to you. Okay. Let's go to number 18. Number 18. Here we go. Graph the system of inequalities. For these, we first need to solve both inequalities for y. Is this one already solved? Yes. How about this one? No. no. So, we need to get rid of this 4x from here to leave the y by itself. What do I do? Subtract 4x, subtract 4x, we're left with y is greater than, what goes first? Negative 4x plus 4. So now we have two inequalities. We have this one in, in here that, that it was already solved for y, and this one in red that is uh, now solved for y. Let's graph. Let me get my coordinate plane going. Here it is. I'm going to graph first. Uh, which one? The one in red? Okay, so let's start with that one. This one says uh, y is greater than negative 4x plus 4. What information do we need from there? We need the y-intercept. What is my y-intercept? 4. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4. So my y-intercept is at 4. There it is. And the other information that I need is my slope. What is my slope? Negative 4 over 1. So that tells me that we go 4 steps down, 1 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1 to the right. Plot your point. Let's do it again. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 to the right. Plot my point. I'll stop right there. Now, check this out. Now we need to graph first the line. And what do you notice here? Everybody look up. What do you notice here? Does it have an equal sign? No. no. Therefore, this line is going to be a dotted line. Who remembers that? Okay. So therefore, let me do a dotted line for this one, and I'm going to use red so we can see it. There it is, watermelon, wow. Okay, there it is. So there's my line. However, this is an inequality. That means we need to shade a region. So let's see. What information do I need? I need the y, the greater than, and the 4. So let's see. According to the y-axis, this says y is greater than 4. What numbers are greater than 4? 5, 6, 7. Where is that located? On this side of the line. So I'm going to shade all this. Yeah. No, then, then 4. We're using the y-intercept. I'm still not done. Here we go. Let's graph this one. I'm going to start at 4, which is right here. And my slope is what? 4 up, 1 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 to the right. So that's about right there. And is it a dotted or a solid line? 
dot it, so therefore my line should look something like, let's see. Like that. So now let's graph the shaded region. We need the y, the less than, and the 4. What number, here's 4, on the y-axis, what numbers are less than 4? 3, 2, everything over here. Now look at the blue line, dotted line. Where is this located? Under it. So we're going to shade everything over here under the blue line. There it is. So does everybody see the overlapping shades right here? And this is what we call the solution set. Let's go to number 19. Okay, number 19. Yes, please. Yeah. Number 19, let me zoom out. Give me a second. Uh, there it is. Let me read that just again. Uh, number 19, write an equation in slope intercept form for the line through the two points 0, 3, and 2, negative 1. Part B, write the equation using y intercept and slope. I mean, graph the equation. And number, and letter C is write the slope of the line that is perpendicular to the given line. So first of all, to provide a, an equation, we need two things, slope and y-intercept. Or if they give us two points such as this, we need at least one point and a slope. So the first thing that we need to write is our point-slope form. So I'm doing right now part A. Point slope is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. However, like I said, we can use one of these two points. I'm going to use, uh, which one do you want to use, the first or the second? Okay, so this one would be, the first one we can label x sub 1, y sub 1. The second one is x sub 2, y sub 2. So by looking at this, Look at the information that they require here. What goes here? In the y sub 1, what value? 3. Three. In the x sub 1, which value? Yeah. 0. So in order to solve for the equation and write in y equal mx plus b form, we need a slope. However, we don't have a slope. Which means, I'm going to go over here to the side, and I'm going to write the formula for the slope. m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Do we have those values? Yes, they're right there. Let me write them uh, right underneath. We got y sub 2 is negative 1 minus y sub 1 is 3 x sub 2 is 2 minus x sub 1 is 0. So let's see, what is negative 1 and negative 3? That's negative 4. What is 2 minus 0? 2. So what is negative 2, I mean negative 4, divided by 2? Negative 2. So instead of m right here, what am I going to write? Negative 2. This is m right here so that we don't lose track of it. So now that we have that, I'm going to bring everything else down on my formula, my point slope. I have the y, the minus, the equals, parentheses, x, the minus, parentheses. From there, all we have to do is distribute and solve for y. So you know what I just said? So I'm going to distribute here. This is negative 2x plus 0, bring down the equal sign, the y, and the minus, and the 3. So now, what's left? Is y by itself already? No. No. What's next to it? The minus 3. So I need to add 3, add 3. So this is y equals negative 2x plus 3. 
Part A is done. This is part A. It says, write an equation in slope-intercept form. Let's see. Is the slope first? Yes. Is the y-intercept at the end? Yes. This is slope-intercept form. However, what did we do to get the slope-intercept form? We had to write the point-slope form because they were giving us two points, and we needed to use at least one of them. What else did we need? The slope. How do we get the slope? By using the two points in our formula right here. So we're done with that. Part B says, graph the equation using the y-intercept and the slope. So let's graph that. I'm going to get my coordinate plane. So what is my slope of, uh, well, I'm going to start with my y-intercept. What is my y-intercept? Three. So I go one, two, three. Three is right here. And then I'm going to use the slope to graph my line. What is my slope according to that equation? Negative two in fraction form is over one. That tells me that we have to go two steps down and one to the right. One, two, one to the right. There's my point. Never. Because we always go to the right. So, from there, let's do it again. One, two, one to the right. There it is. And with those two points, I'm going to go ahead and graph my line. Let's see. Let me get my line here. And there it is. Part B is done. This is part, oh well. This is part B. Okay. So we got A, we got B. Part C says, write the slope of the line that is perpendicular to the given line. What was the slope of this line? Negative 2 over 1. So, if it says that they want the perpendicular slope of a line that is perpendicular to this one, what did we say perpendicular was? It's the opposite reciprocal. What is the opposite of a negative? And what is the reciprocal of, reciprocal of 2 over 1? So the slope for this perpendicular one is 1 half. And it's a positive. Positive 1 half. Why? Because it has to be the opposite reciprocal. A perpendicular slope is what? Opposite reciprocal. A perpendicular slope is the opposite reciprocal. And that was 19. That was part C. That's it. Let's go to number 20. Here we go. Number 20. Let me zoom in here. It says, factor completely. That means you need to factor where there is no other factor other than the factor, the monomial or binomial, and one. There is no more GCF. So whenever we see the word factor, what do we remember? It's GCF. That's the first thing we need to check. What is the GCF for these two? M, and we're left with 4M minus 1. Can I simplify this anymore? No, and we're done. Is this a squared right here? Oh, M squared right here, yes. Yeah, I did that to see if you were paying attention. However, check this out. Since it has a square, what does this look like? Difference of squares. So let's see. Square root of this is 2m. Square root of this is 1. Is it a difference? Yes. So this is 2m plus 1. 2m minus 1. Bring down the TCF. Now we are done. Wow. This is the answer. Let's go to number 21.
Thank you. Number 21 says, factor completely again. Here it goes. So, first of all, do we have GCS? Uh, let's see. Nope. However, this one has how many terms? Four. So, for this one, I remember that when we got to these, we actually factored by grouping. So, I'm going to group the first two terms and the last two terms. So, I'm going to focus on these first two terms. Is there a GCF for these two terms? Yes, R. And we're left with S plus 5. Plus. Look at the second one. What is the GCF for these two? T. And we're left with S plus 5. Now, by looking at it, since it says factor completely, we need to look at it again. Is there a GCF for these two terms? Now, notice we still have two terms. Term 1, term 2. Is there something that is factorable? What's the same here and here? S plus 5. And what is left? R plus T. And we're done. That's it. That factor completely. Let's go to number 22. 22. Here we go. It says, divide. Simplify your answer. Here we go. It says, x squared plus 3x minus 10 over 2x plus 6 divided by x squared minus 4 over x squared minus x minus 12. So I remember these, the first thing I did was to simplify this as much as possible. So can I factor the numerator? Is there, G, is there GCF first? No. But what can I do to factor it? Power Rangers. So here I have 10 negative 10 and 3. What factors of negative 10 equals to 3? 5 and negative 2. So this becomes x plus 5, x minus 2 over. GCF here, what is GCF? 2, we're left with x plus 3. Now by looking at this, can I Eliminate anything or simplify. No, I'm going to leave it at, uh, factored like so. Now check this out. Here we're going to change this to multiplication. And now we're going to flip this one, the reciprocal, because it's division, right? But before I do, let me factor this. What is this? Everybody look up. Difference of squares. So therefore that goes on the denominator. X plus 2. X minus 2. Very good. How about this one? What do we do? Power Rangers. Da, 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 negative 12, negative 1. What are my factors here? 3 and negative 4. So this becomes x plus 3, x minus 4. Can we simplify this fraction anymore? No. No. At that point, since we're about to multiply, then I make this all one fraction. And now we can start identifying giant ones. What do you see? The x minus 2. x minus 2. x plus 3. And that leaves us with, let's see, x plus 5 times x minus 4 to x plus 2. And we can leave it like that. Yes, ask uh, Mr. Fuller. Number 23. That's right. Here we go. Says solve for X. Number 23. Here we go. Solve for X. 
seven x squared minus eighteen x plus eleven equals zero. So, so this one does have a leading coefficient, which means let's see, it's going to be a little bit different. We get our Power Rangers going, da, 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 da. but this time we multiply the first times the last. That gives us 77, and it's negative 18. I'm going to open two parentheses here, equal to zero. And did we check for GCF? Let's see, is there a GCF? No, that's the first thing we should check. So no GCF. So let's see, factors of 77 that give us a sum of negative 18. Let's see, uh, yes, negative 11 and negative 7, okay? But instead of filling them in here, remember these? These are the ones that require the extra step. You write the first 7x squared. From there, we write these two right here. And by the way, which is a multiple of 7? Is it 11 or 7? So I'm going to write negative 7x, then from there I'm going to write negative 11x, and then at the end I write the last term, which is 11, and it's a positive. So now from there, check this out. From here we group, we group uh, by twos. Group right here, put a plus in between so that we know it's not multiplying, it's, a, uh, it's adding. So here, what is GCS here? 7x, and we're left with x minus 1, okay? Look at this one. This one, GCF is what? But doesn't the leading coefficient have a negative? So it's negative 11, and I'm left with x minus 1. So what is the same here and here? That goes right here, x minus 1. And what is my other expression? 7x minus 11. So now we're on our way to solve this. Now we set each one of these equal to 0. So this one is x minus 1 equal to 0. This one is 7x minus 11 equal to 0. Let's solve. Plus 1 plus 1 x equals 1 plus 11 plus 11, 7x equals 11, divide by 7, divide by 7, x equals 11 over 7. If you want to simplify that a little bit more, 7 fits in there one time and we have 4 7s. So therefore, our solution You can write it in brackets. You can write 1, comma, 1 and 4 sevenths in brackets, not in parentheses. Because if you write parentheses, that tells me that it's a coordinate. This tells me that it's two different solutions. Does everybody understand that? Okay. So now, when we write it like this, what is the name of these two things? These are roots. Zeros, x intercepts, and it's our solution. Number 24. And, and by the way, if we were to graph this, check this out. Our first point will be at what? 1. The other one at 1 and 4, 7, so almost 2, right? And then what would be my y intercept? 11. Let's go to number 24. Here we go. Completing the square. Like I said, this is similar to what we've been doing on the warm-ups. So by completing the square, let's look at it. It looks like they already did some work for us. Watch, let me uh, get some stuff out of the way so it doesn't distract you. This and this. So watch, looking at it. Uh, if you notice, they already got rid of the constants for us, right? So we just need to add b over 2 squared. What is b? 8. So we add 8 over 2 squared to each side. 
We're left with x squared plus 8x. What is 8 divided by 2? 4. What is 4 squared? 16. And this is 10 plus 16. Are we there so far? Now, we need to factor this. We can either use the Power Rangers or we can use the, uh, the shortcut, right? Square root of the first, x. Square root of the last, 4. What is the sign of the middle term? Plus, so this is x plus 4 squared. And this is 26. So far, so good? This? Uh, we factored it. This is where some of you still don't understand. We have x squared plus 8x plus 16. Power Rangers, 16, 8. What factors of this? 4 and 4. 4 plus 4. This is x, x. And what is this? 4, 4. So where's the 8x? It went away because this came from here which is the same thing here. The only thing I wrote it as x plus 4 squared. Does everybody see that? Okay. Like I said, we can, you can do this, but it's easier if you do the shortcut so it can go a little bit faster. So how do we cancel this squared? Square root. Square root of this, square root of that. This cancels. We're left with x plus 4 equals plus minus. Can we take the square root of 26? No. That's the square root of 26. Now, in order for us to be exact, let's leave it like a root, like so. Now, let's subtract this. Minus 4 minus 4. X equals negative 4 plus minus square root of 26. And we're done. All right. Uh, I'm going to finish this up. And, um, but if you need extra help, go to the YouTube video. I already have the first problems worked out. But this is what I want you to do. Go through the study guide, finish it completely, put an asterisk on the ones that you don't understand. For example, you're going to skip those, right? Yeah. And then you can go to the YouTube video and see how it's worked out and so that, and you don't have to play it out just until you remember and then try and see if you can work it out completely. All right, so study guide, the name of the video will be, uh, well, it will be the most recent upload on my YouTube channel, but it will be uh, 2014 second semester final study guide. Have a good one, everyone. Share your homework. See you guys tomorrow. I was so angry. Number 25. What? Here we go. Write the value of the determinant of the equation, then use it to decide how many real number roots uh, the equation has. Use a quadratic formula to solve the equation. Well, first of all, the quadratic formula is x equals minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay? So we have the formula, and they're asking us, write the value of the discriminant of the equation. The discriminant is this piece. There we look up. This piece right here. So I take that and I write it here. We got b squared minus 4ac. And we substitute values according to the equation here. What is, let's see, what is A? A is 3. What is B? 1. And what is C? Negative 4. So I substitute those values in here. What was B we said? 1, that's squared, minus 4 times A times E. So A is 3, and C is negative 4. So at this point, we simplify this. This becomes 1. Then multiply from left to right. We got negative 4 times 3. That's negative 12 times negative 4. That's positive 48. What is 48 plus 1? That's 49. 
and that is the value of the discriminant of the equation. That's part A, 49. So we're done with A. B, use it to decide how many real number roots the equation has. It's a positive number, so therefore that means we have two roots. So you need to write two roots for part B. This is part A. What if it was a negative? Zero roots, very good. What if it was a zero? One root, okay? So we got that, and last part, use the quadratic formula to solve the equation. So I just substitute values from here, which means x equals negative parentheses plus minus square root, parentheses squared minus four parentheses parentheses over two parentheses. So at that point, we substitute values. What is B? B is, um, give me a second. You're welcome. Okay, here we go. So what is B? B is 1, and it goes here and here. What is A? 3, which goes here and here. And what is C? Negative 4, which goes right here. So, oh. Okay, we're on part C. We're solving using the quadratic formula. Here it is. So at, at this point, let's simplify. X equals negative times 1 is negative 1 plus minus square root. All this, didn't we do that up here with the discriminant? Yeah, right? What is uh, 1 squared? 1. This is 48 plus 1. That's 49 over 6. So far so good? Yeah. So we got x equals negative 1 plus minus what square root of 49? 7 over 6. At that point, we write our two, our two equations. So, check this out. we have x sub 1 is negative 1 plus 7 over 6. So notice this when I just use the positive. So for this one, I'm going to use just the positive 7 for my solution. So let me let me solve this. This is negative one plus seven. That is six. What is six over six? One. Now let's go to x sub two. X sub two. I rewrite. We got negative one, but instead of positive seven, it's negative seven over six. Why negative? Because it indicates it right here. So therefore, this becomes negative eight over six. How many times does 6 fit in here? 1, and it's a negative. And we're left with 2 sixes, which is 1 third, or negative 1.3. And that's the solution using the quadratic formula. Okay? So this is part C. Okay? Let's go to number 26. 26. Okay, let's see. So we got find the coordinates of the vertex, find the x intercepts, graph the equation using the vertex and the x intercepts. So, first of all, let's change this equal to 0. We got x squared minus 2x minus 3. So, first of all, um, they want us to find the vertex, the x intercepts, and the very first thing that you know how to do is solve for x, right? So what do we do here? I'm going to do b first. So we got uh, power rangers. We got negative 3 and negative 2 right here. What factors of negative 3 add up to give us negative 2? Yep, that is negative 3 and 1. So here we go 0 equals parentheses, parentheses. This is x and x. And this is negative 3, and this is positive 1. Are we there so far? Okay. Set each one equal to 0. x minus 3 equal to 0. x plus 1 equal to 0. Let's solve. Plus 3 plus 3. x equals 3. Minus 1 minus 1. x equals negative 1. And those are my roots or x intercepts or zeros. So that is part, this is part what? B. 
Let's go to part A. Find the coordinates of the vertex. So for the vertex, check this out. I'm going to refresh your memory. For the vertex, we need an x value and a y value. And remember from the uh, quadratic formula that we were using part of that to find the vertex. Let me show you what we use. x equals minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. But what part did we use uh, earlier for the, first of all, for the discriminant, we use this part. But what do we use for the vertex? Let me show you. And I think we labeled it the California. Remember that? Yeah, there it is. It looks like a little California deformed. Anyway, so I'm going to write that here. X equals minus B over 2A. So by looking at this, what is B? Very good. Negative 2. So this is X equals negative, negative 2 over 2. What is A? That is right. 1. So this is, let me move this up a little bit. This is x equals, what is negative times a negative? Positive 2 over 2, which is 1. So we have our x value for the vertex. There it is. How about to find the y value? Right. Remember that we substitute that in here. But this f of x becomes a what? A y. Yes. So therefore, let me write that over here. Because it's interchangeable. Remember, from function, we can write it as y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. But instead of x, I'm going to substitute what? Very good. 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3. And that's going to give me my y value. So let's see. Uh, order of operations. Parentheses, I can't do anything. I'm going to write here PEMDAS. Parentheses, nothing. Exponent, yes, this is 1. y equals 1. Uh, I'm going to bring down the negative 2 times 1 minus 3. Multiplication, yes, right here. This is y minus, I mean, y equals 1 minus 2 minus 3. And then at the end, addition and subtraction from left to right. 1 minus 2 is negative 1 minus 3. That's negative 4. Are we there so far? So this is negative 4. So um, now that we have our vertex, we have our x-intercepts. They're asking us to graph using those information. But remember that I showed you how to graph using also the y-intercept. So it could be more accurate. So by looking at it, what is our y-intercept according to our equation here? That's right, negative 3. So let me zoom out so I can show you how to graph. Here it goes. OK, I'm going to graph it over here. So get our coordinate plane. And don't worry, on the party, I'll give you a, uh, a coordinate plane already so that you just plot your point and you graph. OK? All right, here we go. So let me straighten this one out a little bit. I think that's about straight. So let's see. Let's start with our y-intercept. Our y-intercept, we said negative 3. 1, 2, 3. There it is. OK, so we're done with this. What, is, what are our roots? 3 and negative 1. So my roots, or x-intercepts, are 3 and negative 1. 3, 1, 2, 3 and negative 1. Okay, so those are my x intercept or my roots. What's missing? That's right, the vertex. So I'm going to graph the vertex. The vertex says 1 of x, negative 4 of y. 1 of x, negative 3, negative 4 of y, which is right there. That's my vertex. So with that said, let's graph this. And then goes back up. And remember, the vertex is either the minimum or maximum. This is the minimum because that's the lowest point. And we're done.
Pretty cool, huh? All right, let's go to number 27, last one. It says, the height of a diver above the water during a dive can be modeled by H minus 16 T squared plus 8 T plus 48, where H is the height in feet and T is the time in seconds. Find the time it takes for the diver to reach the water. So, for this one. Let me get this cropped out and brought over here. Okay, there it is. So, do we know how to solve quadratics like this? Yes. We change this for what? Very good. Zero. We're left with negative 16t squared plus 8t plus 48. So, by looking at it, what would be our GCF? Remember, because we need to factor this, but we need to check for GCF. What divides here, that divides here, that divides here? Two, okay. How about four? Yes. But what is a greater one? That is right, eight. All right, so here we go. So we got um, uh, GCF is a leading coefficient of the next, so it's negative eight. And we're left with two T squared minus uh, T and this is minus 6. So far so good and all that equal to 0. So now we need to factor this. So this is 0 equals negative 8 open two parentheses and let's get our power ranger going. Da, 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 da. So this is 2 times negative 6 that's negative 12 and this is negative 1. So let's see. We'll factor up 12, add up to negative 1. Let's see, how about negative 4 and 3? Yes, okay. So, so far so good. So, we're there. However, this one has a leading coefficient, so I'm going to rewrite it here. I'm going to write 2t squared, and then I'm going to write what? These two right here. It's negative 4t and then plus 3t, and then at the end, this one, minus 6. Now I'm going to group these group and these group, and it's a plus here. So GCF here is 2t, right? We're left with t minus 2 plus, what's GCF here? Yep, 3, and we're left with t minus 2. So what's the thing here and here? That's right, t minus 2, and then what's left? 2t plus 3. So let's rewrite this over here, set it equal to 0. So we got, I'm going to go this way, or let me go down here. 0 equals negative 8. The other one is t minus 2 equals 0. And the other one is 2t plus 3 equals 0. So let's see, is this true? No. That's why we get rid of this. We we'll solve this one. Plus 2 plus 2, t equals 2. This one, minus 3 minus 3, 2t two equals 3, negative. Divide by 2, divide by 2, t equals negative 3 over 2. Negative, t equals negative 3 over 2. However, it's a work problem and they're talking about time. Can we measure time with negatives? No. Therefore, we use this one. So it says, find the time it takes the driver, the driver to reach the water. In seconds, so how many seconds? Seconds, two. So then you just write, it takes the diver two seconds to reach the water. All right, that's it. So once again, homework uh, is for you to uh, finish your study guide, which is this first one, and uh, hopefully this will help you uh, with the rest of the study guides that I'm going to give you. Okay, have a good one. See you guys tomorrow.